Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three in the UK. And just a quick apology that I didn't get out a Thursday video um, last week. Uh, the week just ran away with me and by the time Thursday morning came around I was just exhausted and I just did not feel like at doing a video. I've been running around a little bit like a headless chicken um, for the last couple of weeks it feels and now we're just like doing this mass declutter and clean ready for Samhain. I'm also filming this whilst having um, a seasonal rhinitis attack so I'm just constantly sneezing. So um, um, this video is kind of an answer to a question I've had a few times now um, specifically about education philosophies and plans and timetables and all that sort of thing. Um, and I'm just going to share what we do, obviously I'm not telling you what to do, I'm not offering you advice in any way, just sharing what we do in the hope that you can then form your own kind of um, rhythm or plan. Um, I'm just loading up my laptop because I've got all of the bits that I want to show you and that I'm going to add into the description and stuff, I just want to read to it from you, read from it to you, there we go. Um, so firstly, we... So firstly, we try um, very hard to stay away from the idea of a timetable uh, because it's very school-like and we're not trying to recreate school at home. And um, even those of us who are very structured, we're not recreating school at home. You just can't do it. Um, it just doesn't work. So we have a rhythm and we have like a rhythm throughout the day, but none of them are timed um, unless we have places to be. I try and get all of our school kind of work you know the workbooks that sort of thing the curriculum based stuff done in the morning um, just because then it's over and done with and we can do whatever we want for the rest of the day it really like the workbooky kind of stuff only takes about an hour um, and that's as long as they're not and that, I suppose that's if they're really struggling with it not for the content but just like they don't really want to do it that day um, we'll just do it really really we do it reasonably quickly and then it's all done and um, and then we've got the rest of the day to just play if we want or go for a walk or go to the park or, or visit friends or visit family or whatever. So we don't timetable as such, but I do schedule in certain things for certain days. So for example, on a Wednesday, the children have swimming and it's 11.30 till 12.30 and all three of them swim in that time. Now before this, usually we don't have time to get the stuff done by the time we're kind of up and kicking and 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 ready for the day there's not a lot of time to kind of get them in that mood to sit and do workbook stuff before it's time to head out to swimming um just because we could be quite slow movers in the morning and then after swimming um the boys aren't so bad they, they they're fine with it but bessie really struggles with transitions and transitioning from being out of the pool to in the pool and then being out of the pool in the pool to in the changing rooms and then and then changing rooms to home it's a lot of transitions a lot of small transitions but transitions all the same in a very small space of time and um and yeah it can be a bit of a challenge so we don't um we don't do anything on a wednesday afternoon we don't have play dates we don't go to the park we just watch a movie usually so if we haven't done the home ed stuff in the morning the book work books and things in the morning then it doesn't get done on a wednesday and that kind of rhythm is the same. The expectation of a Wednesday is the same every week. Um, the children just do understand that. Um, so yeah, a rhythm is more important than a timetable in my, in my view. Um, so our rhythm throughout the week um, mainly revolves around our activities. Um, and on um, a Monday, the children, the big children, Charles and Bessie go to a forest school um, and then and Albert is just with me in the morning and then in the afternoon he goes and spends time with either one of one set of his grandparents or his aunt um, just so I can have a couple of hours to myself go see the horses um, I might ride I might do training with them I might take the dog for a really long walk I might visit my grandmother I might visit a friend like who maybe I don't want to take the children to see that kind of thing um I might just go and get coffee and sit in a cafe on my own sometimes editing this video <laughs> um so Mondays um are they don't they have a day off of like the workbook type stuff 
um, because they're not here and I don't feel like it's fair. Like, I don't have time in the morning to sit and do work work with them. And then in the afternoon, we're all so tired. Um, and before lockdown, Charles would then have Taekwondo immediately afterwards. So it was just not, it just, yeah, it just didn't happen. So we had Sundays and Mondays off rather than Saturday and Sunday, they had Sunday and Monday. Um, Tuesday would be a day where we are, um, Phil is home from work and quite often I am out and about doing things again that I don't want to do with the children. It might be running errands to a shop that's just a bit of an annoyance to take the kids with me or um, it might be that I'm again visiting a friend, going to visit my sister, whatever. Sometimes again I just, you know, go and see the horses or whatever. Um, and Phil will do the home ed that day. He will do the workbooks with the children and if I've left hit, left like a project or something like that, um, they will begin that project. Um, we haven't done a lot of project work over lockdown just because I feel like with all of the changes and all of the transitions and then person, things going on in our personal life, um, obviously you know we lost our horse which was a really difficult time and we have an ill relative at the moment um, who's very close to us. So um it, yeah it's all it's all kind of we just haven't done a lot of project work because we've just not none of us have had their space to do it um we've been doing a lot of arts we've been doing a lot of crafts and we've been doing a lot of seasonal things about the sabbats and the wheel of the year so that's been filling up our time with project stuff just being in nature and, and being creative so that's usually a day that we would do something like that um or they'll do something physical, like they'll be out on the trampoline, they'll be gardening, they'll be going for bike rides with their dad, that sort of thing. Um, on a Wednesday, as I said earlier in the video, um, on Wednesdays, they would be doing um, their swimming, so we'd try and get workbook done in the morning, and then in the afternoon, um, I would try and do something educational, but not anything that's gonna kind of trigger anyone to kick off into a meltdown. Um, because their anxiety and stress is already at a certain point and I don't want to push them over that. Um, so we might watch documentaries, I might get them to watch science videos on YouTube. Um, I've linked a channel just here uh, that I really, really like. Um, she, she, I think she's a science teacher um, over in the US. She's got a great channel, I really love watching her videos. There's stuff on there that I've not seen, I've liked. Um, so yeah, um, check her out, check out um, um, Michelle's channel. It's really, really cool. She's just so of science experiments and stuff like that. That's really, really fun. So we might watch things like that. Um, sometimes we watch just things like Magic School Bus or uh, maybe a David Attenborough documentary, that kind of thing. We're still learning, it's fun, but it's, there's no pressure. Um, so on a Thursday, um, it's quite a busy day in the evening through term time because Bessie has ballet and Charles has um, Taekwondo straight after and then I will be having after half term, I'll be doing Zoom rainbow chats um, with my rainbow unit, we'll be doing our rainbow evening but on Zoom. So it's going to be a really, really busy, um, a really busy time on a Thursday. So again, we're going to be getting everything done in the morning so I can spend the afternoon planning and getting everything ready and then it's kind of all you know throwing people in the air trying to get stuff done um <laughs> so the Friday is a really really chill out day we will try and go out again do our nature walk sometimes it doesn't happen sometimes we just do a dog walk and we go to the park we're outside that's all that matters but we try and go outside and spend a lot of time outside on a Friday again getting the workbook done in the morning and we try and do maybe something creative. If we don't get outside and we look outside, maybe the weather's awful and we're like, ooh, ooh. Then we try our best to do something creative instead. I think that that is what has got us through um, this pandemic, it's home educating the pandemic, because obviously we've had, you've had loads of people um, who have, who at the beginning of lockdown were pulling, had their kids come, had to come out, eh, had their kids come out of school and they were like, ah, what do we do? Um, and I'm like, oh, now we're homeschooling. Like, oh, you know what, you know what you're doing. You know how to homeschool. Like, I don't know how you guys were doing it. That's not how I do it. Um, and certainly, pandemic home education has is is different to what our usual home education is. Um, we used to love to be able to beat a big group of people at the park, several different families, and all of the kids would play together, and all of the mums would chat. And and we don't have that anymore, and it is really really tricky. 
um, as, ho as soon as we are able to, as soon as it's safe to, I'm going to start like a park crawl, which is something that we used to do in the spring and summer. Um, and that was, we would go to a different park every week in the local area and we would play and it would all be fun. Um, obviously we can't do that right now, but as soon as we can, I'm totally on it. Um, so that's that's kind of how our week goes on on Saturday. We'll do, again, that might be a project day. It might be something that we do as a family. Sometimes there'll be things like, oh, well, um, I might do a woodwork type thing uh, where the kids have a, have a play with some woodworking with Phil. Or again, they'll do gardening with me. We'll go for a nice long walk with the horses, that sort of thing. Um, we try and just spend a lot of time outside and be creative and do lots of creative stuff when we're inside. I also um, am really big on teaching life skills, so we'll do cookery. They will do their chores because they have them and, and they haven't done them. Re they haven't done them very well recently or very often, but we need to get back into that. Um, and they will maybe do some sewing. They will do all these kind of things. I'm trying. To, I want to teach them to knit as well. Um, knitting is not my strong point but I want to try and teach my children how to do it and so on it's just these little handicrafts uh, these little things that uh, keep us busy because I don't really encourage I don't want to encourage them to be idle and I don't I like encouraging them to be on screens and there was quite there's been quite a few occasions over since the pandemic and since the lockdown in March that I've just gone oh my god and just handed them a tablet and said just just sit with the tablet just just leave me be for a minute. I need just time to like regroup and and get my headspace. Um, I feel like I'm rambling. Tell me to shut up. And uh, yeah, so there's been more occasions of that than I would have liked. But we're now trying to get back into. Now we're kind of withdrawing inside because um, because of the time of year. I really want to get them doing little busy crafts and things, ready for maybe gifts for you all that sort of thing. So when it comes to an education philosophy, um, I've never actually had to hand one in. Disclaimer. I've never actually had to hand one in. Um, I don't know how we are classed as being under the radar, but we are. We've never had any contact with the council. And if they choose to count, if they choose to, <laughs> I'm surprised since doing this that I've not come on their radar and they've not sent me, um, they've not sent me forms or something because quite clearly I'm you know very open and honest about being a home educator um my children have never been to school so they've never been deregistered so they're not on there and then they're known as being home educated by lots of professionals that are involved that have been involved with them over the years so um i oh yeah i don't know how we're not not still we're not on the radar completely um so the education philosophy i have may not have handed in one myself but i have helped several people I know I say several, I think I've lost count now of how many people um, I've checked your education philosophies and I'm sure some of you are watching today. Checked your education philosophies and helped you write them and stuff and that's really really cool. Um, the way to do them are pretty much the same for everybody and of course I do have my own and I've written it and I've shared it with you before and I will share it with you again um, in the description of this video. Um, and it's basically if you answer the questions in the template below um, and I, they are, they are very similar to ones that I found on a website called Schoolhouse, um, but I've tweaked them so they answer the, they kind of form a more better, um, a, a better template. And if you answer the questions, you should have a decent amount of content to begin an education philosophy. Um, it doesn't have to be ten pages long; it can just be an A4 page long. Um, and if you answer these questions in full, not just like a single sentence, then you usually get enough content to have that as your education philosophy and you just need to maybe pad things out. If you want to try using this template and then send it to me to just check over, I, quite a few of you, all you've said, can I send it to you to check? And I've checked it and I've just proofread it. I've just changed some of the grammar and the bit of the punctuation and I've been like, I, you don't need my help, you've done an amazing job. Um, and I think that's, as all of you have had, had that, you know, we've all had, I've had that experience with all of you is that you've thought you've needed my help and you haven't uh, because you are doing absolutely amazingly. So answer the questions in the template and it should give you, oh, I'm gonna sneeze again. I don't know what's wrong with me today. This is driving me insane. Where was I? So yes. If you fill out the education philosophy, use use answer the questions in the template, and you should get a reasonably decent education philosophy, and that can pretty much stay with you 
forever um, unless your education philosophy changes unless your views on your home education style and journey change then you can update it obviously update it if you had more children to the home education journey and so on um your plan your educational plan is slightly different that is a kind of a yearly based thing um, and it's what you basically what your children what your goals are for home education with your children or your child for the the kind of the calendar year the upcoming year um obviously not everyone assesses their children not everyone does testing or anything like that and we've talked about testing before and how i do it and that is literally just by giving them a workbook a very small workbook and because that's that's really what 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 testing is it's a snippet of what they know in that moment and i find these really small workbooks do help with that and if they find it really easy you know like we're good um they can move up so my um i sit down with the children first of all and i find out what their individual goals are because what my goals might be for them might be very different to what their goals are for them um for example Charles wants to be able to do wants I don't know might want to be able to um make a big poster about wolves and know all of there is to know about wolves for example that's quite likely that he would want to do that and I'm saying actually I think that you should maybe be learning about volcanoes or you should be learning about our capital city and he's going eh, no I'm not interested in that I'm like okay and as I've said before, loads of times, when it comes to subjects that are not English, math, science, um, my children take the lead on that because it's their education. They will learn what they need to learn. And if they don't need to learn about volcanoes, then as long as they know what a volcano is, they don't need to know loads of things about volcanoes. I studied volcanoes at school as part of geography. I still know nothing about volcanoes. I just know that there's lots of them. One of them's called Etna. Ves Vesuvius killed loads of people in Pompeii like I know handfuls of stuff that you I don't know don't know anything concrete about volcanoes I couldn't give you a presentation on volcanoes <clears throat> so I was taught it and I didn't need to know it so it didn't stay in my brain so if they need to know about volcanoes they'll learn about volcanoes they'll remember the information but if if I'm saying you should learn about this and they're going no no I shouldn't they're not going to remember the information and it's going to be useless so he's saying, uh, my goal for this year is to learn all there is to know about wolves, all there is to know about sharks, all there is to know about types of painting or styles of cartoon drawing or anything like that. And that's what we do. So those are the goals for him. And those was what I, those would be what I put into his plan. Um, and the same with Bessie. Bessie might have completely different, <coughs> completely different goals than I have for her. But obviously English and maths goals are are the ones that I set and I don't tell them about them I don't say I have a goal for you to reach this point because I don't want to put any pressure on them because they don't need that that's a me that's a me goal that's not a them goal this is what I want to teach you by the end of the year so for example um Charles my goal for him for this year is to get him writing to get him confident in his writing ability to um work on letter formation with him and his handwriting um and just you know go go for that hello lily hi so hey um whereas um and maths i don't have any goals for him apart from that he just finishes his year's books that's literally it because those will take care of all of that for me um bessie she's coming up to seven and she's really really struggling with reading and i'm not sure at this point whether she's going to need some intervention maybe there is um some, there, is, there is she does have an uncle with dyslexia so i don't know whether um that's going to be something that she's going to need some help with like whether there's something there um or whether she i've just not found the right style to teach her yet um again coming up in the next few weeks i'm going to be talking about teaching children to read and um, we've had very good success with charles with phonics and i think that bessie might need sight reading and then come to phonics later something to get her reading quickly so she can get some confidence up um so yeah my goal for bessie for this year is that she is not she's not such a reluctant reader by the end of the year and i'm not saying i want her to be a confident reader because i don't think we're there yet but i think i want her to be reading a book to me every day just just like the biff chip and kipper like the oxford reading tree that kind of thing kind of books even if it's still on the lowest 
wrong like I want her to be reading a book to me every single day um and I feel like that will come I just have to give her a bit more of a shove and she just kind of hopefully will will that something will click there so um I'm hope that's my that's my goal for my English goal for her this year and I think that I can tell you how to plan um how I plan but you are the ones that know your children best better than teachers um so and better than me obviously I've never met your children um you're gonna know what kind of what those goals are for you and if you're an autonomous learner your goals are that your children learn your children learn what they need to learn what they want to learn and so on my cat's walking behind the camera what are you doing <laughs> um so i am thinking about um getting our plans for um for the day for days and for the weeks and things laminated and put on the wall so the children can have like a visual of what's happening each day and i can kind of um you know put put it in a in a more visual context for all of us because i'm a really visual person if it's not written down it doesn't happen it's kind of my little um thing that i always say and um i really feel like the children would benefit from that and i certainly feel like going forward that's a good idea um so if you guys would like me to share me making that and, and putting that on like a visual timetable um that is home ed and general life um then let me know in the comments give me a thumbs up and i will make sure that that is a video coming up um we i'm trying to get the thursday videos out i'm f i'm gonna be i think what I'm going to be doing is preparing the Thursday videos at the same time I do this video, getting it all done and uploaded in advance for you. So, um, so I'm not going to be falling behind or feel like I'm a failure because I haven't got it done. I think that's all I have to share at the moment about the um, Ed Phil, as it's known as, and our plan. Again, I will, <clears throat> I will link all of the things I've talked about. The Ed, my Ed Phil the template hello lily the plan my plan for this year and um, with some tips again on um you guys making a plan for your children and then i will also um include like um our you know a, another uh, some other bits as well like some links and things that might help you build yours um thank you so much for watching don't forget that our competition to win a twinkle three month subscription is still uh, still going um we haven't had a huge amount of entries yet which is a bit sad i was expecting there to be more um and um you can if you go onto our halloween craft video and you watch that there's a link in there that um will take you to the entry form I'm really, really excited to announce that I will be announcing that I'll be closing that Wednesday um, evening at 8 p.m. And then I will be announcing the winner um, in Thursday's video. So enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you're having a good, you've had a good Monday. I hope that the week is kind to you and the weather is kind. At the moment, it's looking like it's not going to be. And I will see you on Thursday. Bye.